Okay, so first, if you do not know who Brooke is, Brooke, you might recognize as the lovely co-host on Cancelled. I think that's the name of her podcast with Tana. So Tana Mojo and her are like good friends. They have a podcast together. And Brooke, you know, according to Tana and other people, apparently is pretty good at staying out of drama. But, you know, it's content creation. We all have drama at some point in our career. And Brooke dated a guy two years ago named uh clinton kane who sometimes i might refer to as citizen kane as that's what he's being referenced as on the internet which is too funny so this is kane clinton clinton kane okay and he was her boyfriend for a while okay there's two videos i'm going to show that are kind of the reason why we're even talking about this so brooke had stayed pretty quiet about their relationship okay but then he went on this podcast. This is the Zach Sang show. We've watched a little bit of his podcast in the past for um, Leo Skeppy, and he tends to have interesting guests. So he had uh, Clinton on, and Clinton has some stories about his family that are quite interesting. And Clinton is from Australia, right? And so let's listen to Clinton tell us about his family. It's, it's, a, it's a lot, guys. Are you ready? Your dad passed. One year, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. Um, ch chicken tendies is actually... I mean, chicken tendies is actually about losing my mom. So he is a singer on TikTok. And he has like 2 million followers on TikTok. So he wrote a song about losing his mother. And I had a talk with my publicist about explaining how to explain because i wasn't ready to talk about it yet last year about like losing my mom um but she she passed away like two three weeks after the song came out after chicken tennis came out that's why like i had to take a break and it was like a lot of thought and stopping um but that song was actually about losing my mom but i my publicist and i found a way to like make it seem real enough because it's still real like losing her to religion but i have we, we do you you did you did kind of lose her before she was gone right because you didn't have much of a relationship with no her. no it was all gone but it was already complicated before so there's a lot to unpack there yeah your mom passed yeah your brother passed okay so that's the first tiktok then here's the second tiktok more it was like too much i couldn't do it anymore i was like crying all over the place and i like couldn't hear what was going on that's terrible Source. It's, and, it's... and that happened three times. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm cry. It's so bad. Dan's just fucking laughing. Psycho. <laughs> you're making me laugh. <laughs> How am I making you laugh? I'm not fucking doing anything. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's not funny. Ten minutes into it, I just. Okay, so you kind of got a, a vibe. His music. Uh, it's kind of, um, I don't know how to explain it, but I don't want to play it in case I get copyrighted, but it's very like boy band, breathy. Uh, it's very like kind of generic -y sounding. We might hear clips in Brooke's videos. I'm not sure, but I'm not going to play it in case I get copyrighted, but okay. So you kind of get the vibe for him, right? Just like a little bit. Okay. Here's Brooke telling us her story and, um, I'm excited. Because obviously I had my little milk. No, seriously, part one. Who the fuck did I marry? I am trying to be a little bit less psycho on TikTok because... Her volume is so much lower than his was. So I've put it up all the way on my end. And hopefully you guys can hear her okay. I had my little meltdown the other day and that was probably... No, seriously, part one. Who the fuck did I marry? Um, I am trying to be a little bit less psycho on TikTok because obviously I had my little meltdown the other day and that was probably like enough for this week. But... When I open my phone today to a million texts from all my friends of this TikTok that Clinton Kane had posted saying, what did he say? He said like, when I've been over the relationship for two years and she just can't stop yapping about it, which first of all, hilarious. Like no shit, I can't stop yapping, but the nerve. Now, obviously we broke up two years ago, okay? And that was a very, very different time in my life. I was, first of all, unmedicated, okay? And that is a very, very important factor in this story because I get so many comments that are like, Brooke, what on earth were you going through? And I agree. I really don't know. That was a different girl. Mm -hmm. I was bamboozled. Now, I get a lot of comments about his appearance and the way he shakes. Okay, and those are two things that I'm gonna leave off limits for my story time because I feel like that's low hanging fruit and it's 
obvious. It doesn't even need to be addressed. Uh, if you don't know what she's referencing, there was like a TikTok where it shows him singing and he's like very exaggerated when he sings. It's very like I'm a blind man looking for the light. It's very like jerky and very strange and and it's very he's very like over the top. Believe it or not, that was not even really the problem. The fact of the matter is I ended up in a relationship with this man because I was a fan, honestly. I knew of him because of his music. I loved his song, Chicken Tendies or whatever. Tana and I would literally blast it on a loop at our old house and like we were obsessed with it, okay? So randomly one day I get a DM from this artist. It's Clinton Kane. And I remember telling Tana like, oh my God. Like a little bit of a spoiler, Clinton loves to slide into pretty girls DMs. So. Like how funny he just messaged me and he starts just like, asking me questions, whatever. And he asks if I want to go to dinner. And I'm like, I'm looking at his profile and I don't know if I want to go to dinner. Okay. But I'm a some people have said that she's too pretty for him. And I would say that he's the kind of attractive that if you're into him, you're into him. And if you're not, you're not. But Brooke is obviously like very pretty. Um, there's probably not a lot of people that I don't think would be into Brooke's prettiness maybe not her aesthetic but definitely like she's very pretty flying anyway and he asks he's like what about tomorrow i'll fly you to vegas i go what the fuck i do think it is a huge red flag and i know a lot of people have this mentality that it's a nice gesture i think when people offer to pay for you especially men, it's probably a bad sign. It's probably like a red flag. There's a difference when your friends are paying for you or like you buy your friend dinner or like you're like, oh my God, girl, I'll play for your flight. Like, I love you. That's fine. But anytime a man, specific kinds of men, offer to fly girls out, to me, you better, like, I would have the conversation about like, hey, what do you think flying out entails? Are we going to have sex? Is there SDI testing involved? Are we on contraceptives? I'm not interested in you. I just feel like, saying I want to fly you out feels at this point basically like slang for I want a pretty girl in my arms tonight so I didn't know he lived in Vegas so I say no and that's the end of that no seriously part one who the fuck did I marry okay um I am trying to be okay part two who the fuck did I marry like I said, he lived in Vegas, so I obviously was not going to go to dinner with him because he's a stranger, okay? But he persisted, all right? Of course, of the next few months, he would slide up on all my stories, message me constantly. He, some would call him obsessed, honestly, but what am I going to do? I'm not going to fly to meet a stranger, okay? But one day, I get a DM where he says, hey, I have a show tomorrow in LA, like, would you want to come? And again, I loved his music. So I was like, absolutely. I will definitely come because it's like, that's so much less pressure. I don't want to go to dinner with this man. Like I said, I saw his profile, but I want to- Man, she's called him ugly twice now. <laughs> Damn. She called him ugly twice. That's even worse now because if she wasn't into him, she wasn't into him, that's fine. But the way this man- the, the thing, the tea she's about to drop, okay, I don't even know the full story, but the little bit I know, and you didn't even think he was cute in the first place is wild. I want to see the show. So I ask Bibi to come with me and we get ready to go, okay? Remember so specifically the outfit that I wore, because again, this guy has been messaging me so much online that I'm like, I know he like loves me. So I wore the ugliest outfit you could find like bb knows i said it to her i was like i just want like to look as unattractive like to him as possible now remember brooke did preface this with i was a different person back then keep in mind the unhealthy levels of activity that put us in situations look at how much like look how much like 4d chess she has to play with herself to even go she probably shouldn't have been engaged, but here we are, a different Brooke, unmedicated, like she said, making decisions. Because I just don't want that to be the vibes, all right? She and I go to dinner, and we go to the show. See, I would have just said something. I would have just been like, hey, is there any expectation? I don't want to show up and have there be an expectation because I hate that feeling. Just like, what's, what's up? Instead of playing the game of like, I'll just go looking ugly. It's like, no, that's too much work. Don't put yourself in the situation. But like Brooke said... This was her messy years. 
it's amazing, okay? He was amazing. I don't know what's happened since then, but he was slaying at the time. After the show, we go upstairs. I think he was at like El Rey Theater or something. And everybody's like mingling. A few of my friends were there. I remember Justin Cover were there. Markel was there. My, one of my best friends, Justin Horowitz, was there. Like, I don't know who any of those people are. I was are. like mingling with friends and he like came over to me and started talking to me, whatever. And we like hit it off. And I'm going to tell you guys something that you might not believe, but he looked really good. Honestly, <laughs> he was way taller than I thought. And he had a really cool oh. outfit on. And I was like, you know what? He's not as bad as I thought he was. Okay. So we end the night. I go home. Nothing happens. And he texts me after the show. And he's like, would you want to come back tomorrow? And I had an amazing time. I like loved the show. So I was like, you know what? I'll go back. Amari also loved his music. So I texted Amari and I was like, would you want to come? Would you want to come with me to see Clinton Kane tomorrow? And whatever. I bring Amari the next day. Okay. Same show. We do the same thing after. And then Amari and I go back on his bus. Okay. And honestly, we had such a good time. Like, we're, like, cracking up on the bus. We're with a bunch of friends. Amari's having the best time. I'm having the best time. He's funny. He's cool. He's, like, charismatic. I'm like, you know what? Like, maybe, maybe he's not that bad. Okay? Mm. We all mm. get off the bus and go. See how her intuition is, like, maybe he's not that bad? Oh, maybe it's not going to be horrible. It's like, girl, girl. Go to the club. We all get super drunk and me and him end up like making out. We're like very much together at the club. And that was the start of something very horrible. Okay, part two, who the fuck did I marry? Okay. Like I said, okay, part three, who the fuck did I marry? All right. So after the club, he and I went alone to a little diner in LA called Mel's Diner. It's 24 hours. You can go after the club, get fries, shakes, whatever. And he and I order literally every single thing on the menu. And we sit there for like four hours and just talk. Okay. And by the way, hold on. Vibrancy says, why is she roasting this man? I need you to understand the reason she's going so hard on him will not shock you the moment she reveals the most like tea of all tea where I'm like, why? Quote, Tana Mojo said that out of every crazy thing she's ever seen done in Hollywood while she's been here. What, what Citizen Kane, see how I did it? How Clinton, what Clinton Kane did, okay? What he did is the weirdest, craziest thing she's ever seen. Now, we could all argue that, but to be honest with you, it's pretty fucking weird. And I am shook at what he is attempting to pull off. So it will, it, it will make more sense why she feels like she can go after him. Not that that's good, but you know. And this is the point where he tells me about what had happened to him in the year prior, all right? This would have been, I guess, 2020, like during COVID, okay? Okay. He tells me his mom, his dad, and his brother all died in the same year, mm. okay? Which is fucking horrible. Like, obviously, just unimaginable. So I'm, like, blown away. I knew that his mom had died because he had openly talked about, like, how one of his songs was about her and stuff, but I had no idea about the rest of his family. So I was like, holy shit, first of all. And I feel like I completely changed my opinion about him. Cause I'm like, at this point, I'm thinking he's just like this weirdo sliding into my DMs. And now he's very like human to me. Cause I'm like, oh my God, I cannot believe you could overcome something like that. Like that's insane. This is very important to the story. Okay. Because I need you guys to understand how I ended up in this scenario. All right. Then he starts telling me how he got into music. He's telling me how he was homeless and he would backpack around Europe, like literally sleep on benches and busk, like in parks to make money. And he got discovered, whatever. And then obviously I guess I'm in love came out and he was really successful from that song. But I'm just looking at this guy. Like I have never met anybody like you because first of all, I could never be touring a year after like that kind of extreme tragedy for pretty devastating i mentally prepare and meditate constantly about my family dying it'd be i would need some time like i would need some time just to move through it maybe you know but this man wow he's so strong he's so brave the world needs more men like him you know 
I'm being very sarcastic for the autists in the audience, okay? Shout out to my autism. Let's go. Like, okay, my autists, like, I'm being very sarcastic. But we, the world needs strong men who, in the face of death, rise up to the occasion, you know? I've always said this, you know? First of all, second of all, you would never catch me dead sleeping on a bench on purpose. So I was like, this guy's really, like, special. Okay, part three, who the fuck did I marry? All oh, right. he's special, all right, girl. Okay, part four, who the fuck did I marry? Okay, so we had this whole night at this diner. We talked forever, and I got to know a lot about him, okay? He told me all about how he had grown up in Australia, in Perth, Australia. Okay. He talked about how he grew up, like, super wealthy in, like, an eight-bedroom house on the beach in Australia. His mom was a pastor. He said she was a pastor at Hillsong United, which is, like, one of the biggest churches, I guess, in Australia. I don't know. He studied medicine, which... I loved because I was like technically pre-med when I was in college also. I didn't graduate, but it doesn't matter. So I was like, oh my God, we have that in common. Like this is like a really well-rounded, like amazing guy. Okay. And like I said, he doesn't live in LA. So the next night he calls me and he's like, listen, I have a date planned for us. I'm picking you up at eight, whatever. And he does. Okay. We go on this date. It's like a beautiful restaurant, whatever. We have the best time. We talk forever. We go to the beach, yada, yada. I go home and the next day he calls me and he says I am so sorry and I'm so afraid to tell you but I just got on set for my music video and I tested positive for COVID oh obviously I had just like had this whole extravagant date with him the night before I would 100% have COVID we were like making out on the beach mm. the whole night which is like traumatizing but true okay so I'm like this man gave me COVID and he's like, there's nothing I can do. I'm so sorry. But like, obviously we both have it. So I'm quarantining at the one hotel if you want to come and stay with me. So I was like, I mean, like, fuck, like I have COVID now. I have two roommates. Like, guess I got to go. I don't know. Again, unmedicated. I show up to the hotel. Okay. And I move in with the man. Okay. Ooh. Part four. Who the fuck did I marry? Okay. okay. So we had this whole. Part five, who the fuck did I marry, okay? So I'm at the one hotel, one of the most beautiful hotels in all of Los Angeles, okay? It's like several thousand dollars a night for like a nice room. So I'm living the life. We're ordering room service every night. We're like, we're just having so much fun. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I date this guy. <laughs> Keep in mind, we are not separated. I'm sorry. I just, I think we've all had those moments where I was like, maybe I date this guy. <laughs> no. Oh man, no, Brooke, no. So I have no opportunity to view his online presence, all right? Because that is another really important factor to the story. Because had I seen the shaking that was occurring, I might have thought differently. Mm. Okay? But he's in person, he's really normal, he's charismatic, he's Australian, he's a beautiful musician, he's, he's singing to me and playing guitar every night. I'm like, you know what? I'm falling for him, okay? Oh, no. I know, but you asked. As more time passes, we eventually move to like an Airbnb in Marina Del Rey because he wanted to be by the beach. And so we go over there. And this man is not- Wait, 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 wait. Now, okay, this, is, this isn't even what I'm waiting for, but wait. So they went from a hotel because they were quarantining for COVID. And then they went to an Airbnb to quarantine or they didn't literally move in together at this point, right? Right? Yeah, Star says, wait, did she even get herself tested for COVID? No, but she was pretty exposed, so she probably was just, like, being very safe. Okay, okay. Let's see. Not allowing me to go home, okay? This was the first major red flag. Like, if I had a morning where I was like, okay, like, I want to go home and, like, get new clothes and shower and, like, just be a human and be alone for a second, he would immediately, like, shut down, like, why don't you want to be with me? Why would you want to go home? Why can I come with you? Like, just very strange. And I did not like that. A normal person would have seen this as like a big major, like, no in a relationship. Okay. But I. Wait, Fishy says he's charismatic. He's Australian. The priorities. Oh, just wait, Fishy. Just wait. I am not a normal person. So I was like, he wants to be with me all the time. He is obsessed with me. Of course, you know what I mean? So 
Oh, no. Unfortunately, I believed it was a good thing at the time. All right. And I had a bunch of people in my ear. We really romanticize toxicity. We really romanticize possession. We really romanticize people cock blocking us from our priorities because it's romantic. Oh, you have a job to go to? Call in sick, spend time with me. Oh, you have responsibilities? It's like once in a while for sure, but not literally at the detriment of your life, guys. Mm. I had like mutual friends. Like Zach Sang was a really important one too, okay? So Zach is the podcast guy I showed you at the beginning. Okay, so Zach is the podcast guy I showed you at the beginning and they're kind of mutuals and that's sort of how they met as a couple. So basically even Zach told Tana like, oh no, like I think I kind of introduced them and like, let me just, you know, even when your friends introduce you, you don't even know, girl. You don't even know. We were all hanging out together all the time and when Clinton like maybe wasn't around, I would have these people in my ear like, Brooke, if you do not date this man, you are so stupid. Like, first of all, he's going to be huge. He's Even Tana said that on a podcast with Zach saying she was like, we loved him. We wanted Brooke to marry him. We thought he was such a good guy. We thought he was such a good guy. So talented. He's so special. He has like the most amazing story. Like you have to date him. Okay. And one thing about me is I'm easily influenced. So... I start dating the man. Oh. Part five, who the fuck did I marry? Also, I don't know how old Brooke is, but if she's Tana's age, she's 25. Like, I assume, uh, I don't know how old she is, but I'm assuming she's in her mid-20s like Tana. So they're pretty young. They're young people. Part six, who the fuck did I marry? Who, okay? girl? We are now in a committed relationship, all right? And one thing about Clinton is he loved to go on a trip, all right? He wanted to get me as far away from everybody else as possible. Uh-oh. So this time it was Joshua Tree. He's oh, like, let's go to Joshua beautiful. Tree. Let's just spend the weekend. It'll be so relaxing, amazing, whatever. We can work. Great. On the way there, we get pulled over. In his car, he drove a Model X at the time. And when the cop asked for a license and registration, he gave his license, his Australian license, and he gave the registration to the car, which was not his. Not his car. So I thought that was strange. And then the cop is like reciting his information back to him. And he says, you were born in 1999. And I am under the impression that my boyfriend is a year younger than me. Okay. And this would make him like four years younger than me. I'm like, that's really strange. But... We keep going and I ask him about it and he's like, oh, like, that's a fake ID. I just like, I got it mixed up. We got lucky. And I'm in. Um, I, mm, like, ooh, girl. So this is happening while she's 25, right? Because uh, Samantha says she's 27 now. Ma'am, the fake ID, the fake ID. I'm in my head like, that doesn't happen, but whatever. <sighs> also, who has a fake ID to appear younger? Anyway, we go to Joshua Tree and we have this whole little trip, whatever. We were barbecuing and hot tubbing and having this whole little couple's vacation, okay? And everything is going perfect until the nighttime, all right? And this is when we had our first major blowout fight. All right. I'm it's ready. It's a very important turning point because our entire relationship was blowout fights. Okay. But what's important about. Pay attention to the fighting. When people say, oh, it's normal for people to fight. This is like normal behavior. It is not normal behavior. It's toxic and disgusting. Don't yell and fight and demean your partners. Don't do that. It's okay to have disagreements. It's okay to have discussions like you're two individuals, but the name calling, the yelling, the raising the voice, the gaslighting, all of that stuff, that's not love, bros. That's just a toxic relationship. About them is that they were literally out of thin air, okay? So this one was because we're eating our dinner that we made, okay? Mm -hmm. And I am looking at my phone, okay? Keep in mind, we're not, I'm not at a family dinner, we are on a couple's retreat where we have spent every single second together for the past 48 hours. Mm -hmm. Why would I not be allowed to look at my phone? Mm. This is when he proceeded to tell me it's a major 
trigger of his for someone to not pay 100% attention to him at dinner time because that's what his mom used to do to him, all right? And his mom was very neglectful. He had a horrible relationship with her and it was really traumatic. Obviously, everything is unresolved since she has died. And so anything that reminds him of his mother is a no, okay? And he went insane, I tell you. I have mm. never seen a man like just pout and throw like a literal tantrum mm. this way. I was like, how do I undo? I cannot be in a relationship with this man. Part six, who the fuck did I marry? Okay. Part seven, you guys. He said, she can't stop yapping. I'm like, I will show you yapping, okay? <laughs> So we just had our first major, major blowout fight, all right? And this is when I first found out like how he behaves in an argument, which was like a child. Like literally you could not talk any sense into him. It was so irrational and it was just like, like you could not get through to him. There was no like compromise. It was like, you just had to apologize even though he was so unbelievably wrong every single time. Oh my God, it was infuriating. And the overwhelming common theme of all of our arguments was that I was worsening his trauma and he can't believe that I'm so insensitive to everything that he has been through. I remind him so much of his mother who was so horrible to him and I should be way more sensitive to everything that he is going through. Okay, first, okay, a couple things. One, she's saying who the fuck did I marry because that's the connection to the girl on the TikTok. So I think it's a... I don't think she actually marries him. If she does, I do not know that part of the story. No spoilers in the comments. But I don't – I think she doesn't marry him. I think she's using that to refer to the meme, like the the story, the girl we also made. I made a video about this too. The other girl, who the fuck did I marry? But oh my gosh, this type of personality in a person, I bet we all know one person like this. And it does remind me of – and we're not going to diagnose anybody in this room right now. But it does remind me of like very like – toxically like mm, NPD, maybe really toxic BPD. Like, you know what I mean? And we're not diagnosing because we don't know these things. But when they heighten their own trauma, when they make it all about them, like ev this, he sounds exactly like that. Oof. And of course, I'm like, I get that. You know what I mean? Like the man lost three family members in one year. I'm like, he is going through a lot. So I have to give him like a little bit of grace. But it became a situation where I felt like I was, like, mothering this man. Mm. And, like, if I did anything wrong or if I, like, literally split my attention for even one second, he went ballistic because he was, like, a little infant baby child. Mm -hmm. I want to be sensitive to his situation, but it was so... Oh, so if just says, doesn't Brooke have BPD? Oh, wait. Is Yeah, Brooke does have BPD, right? She talked to Trisha about it. Oh, shout out BPD girls. Let's go. Oh, she's medicated. I wonder what's helping. I wonder if it's for, is she medicated for her borderline? Because I know there's not a medication for borderline. So is she medicated for borderline? She's probably an antidepressant, right? I'm looking into antidepressants for my fibromyalgia. But antidepressants do a lot more. They also help with ADHD. Isn't that amazing? Shout out to antidepressants. Oh, it was like way too much for me to handle because I'm already, you guys know, I'm emotionally unstable, okay? And I have no business fixing whatever was like seriously very wrong with him. I would go out- um, Even if she was emotionally stable, it's not like you need a professional intervention. Okay. With my friends, like I remember one night I was at dinner with Tana and he's blowing me up, like literally sending me novels about how he drank an entire fifth of vodka, he's gonna drive. I need to get to him right now or he's going to do crazy things. Like it was just so manipulative. And I, and I just like, I was not equipped. Mm -mm. Part seven, you guys, he said, she can't stop yapping. I'm like, I will show you part eight. I think I am honestly not sure. I'm just trying not to spare you any details. So I'm in my relationship with my little. Hold on. No spoilers in the chat, guys. Baby man child. And he still lives in Vegas. Okay. So we are technically in a long distance relationship but we never separate so either i'm in vegas staying with him or he is living with me or we'd get like an airbnb in marina del rey whatever it doesn't matter mm, beautiful we are never separating and at this time his album was about to come out okay so like he was doing the whole rollout he was like really getting in the zone and i was just constantly there for like all the work that he was doing and this album was special because it was this first piece of work that he was putting out since Everything had happened and since everyone had died, okay, and the whole album died. 
died. Died. Sorry. I love the way she said that just now. Um, hold on. Conrad said if she is borderline, there's a higher chance he is a narcissist and then Maiden agreed and then I'm going to agree because borderlines and narcissists tend to like codependent on each other somehow. Not that that's very common since there's far more borderlines in the world and there are narcissists. Fun fact. So at the, well, diagnosed. So at the end of the day, like we're not sure how those overlap quite, but they do tend to complement one another. Album was about that, of course. And as a part of his little press tour, he went on the Zach Sang show, okay? If you are not familiar, Zach Sang is an interviewer. He does like huge celebrity interviews and he gets really deep and talks about like life and music and everything. Zach is also one of his best friends. So Zach like knows his story very well and he does the interview accordingly, okay? He's asking like all the questions about his mom, about the funerals, about his brother, about his dad, everything. And he is answering obviously and he's talking about how he had to attend the funerals during covid and he had to do it via zoom because of like everything that was going on and he is really just going in in this interview in his oh hold on kenny says doctor as dr honda uh kirkonda says under every narcissist is a borderline i do kind of believe that I've read a lot about narcissism. Well, not a lot. I've read like three books, but I've read some up on narcissism and sometimes they sound like, cause they pre-abandon themselves. Like they abandon themselves so hard. It feels like they give themselves borderline. It's not funny. It is a, it is a crisis of health. Like being a narcissist and PD is a crisis of like, that's a mental health issue. That's sad. Um, and as a borderline who's like in recovery, I'm very like I believe in that. Like, I believe in people being able to recover. And Dr. Kirkonda has also worked really hard to help people with NPD. So there are there is there are people who believe they can get better. And I believe I, I want to believe in that too. Australian accent. And the interview comes out. I was staying with him at an Airbnb at the time and I posted. Hold on, I just want to rewind in that. Interview. In his Australian accent. Oh, in his Australian and the accent. Comes out. I was staying with him at an Airbnb at the time and I posted a TikTok with him in it, okay? And in my comments, I started getting girls going, uh-oh, like, not him. And I immediately was like, wait, what? <laughs> and I have a girl tell me like, oh, by the way, he cheated on his ex-girlfriend with literally 15 girls. And before this, he had told me that his ex, who I guess I'm in love is about, by the way, one of the most beautiful songs ever. People use it as their wedding song, it's like, I mean, it's his biggest song. Mm. He told me that the girl that that... That's kind of crazy. Like, people know his music enough to, like, use it at their weddings. That's so interesting. I've never heard about him until now. That was about had cheated on him. Okay? So this was news to me. And I asked him about it. I'm like, did you cheat on her? And, like, it was the most nonchalant thing in the world. He was like, uh, well, yeah. I'm like, ooh. Excuse people are way too casual out here. Okay, about their cheating habits. Y'all are way too casual. Y'all are way too casual about it. Excuse me? Part eight, I think. I am honestly not sure. Part nine. I'm having so much fun. Okay. <laughs> so we just found out that he cheated on his ex-girlfriend, who I guess I'm in love is about. Okay? Beautiful love song. You can't imagine <laughs> that he could possibly do something bad to her, right? Wrong. He was cheating on her the whole time. All right? And... What I realized when I really looked into it is I was one of the girls because, like I said, oh my God, he has been messing. She was one of the girls that he was cheating on. Oh, that is so much more interesting now that I know what's coming up. That is so much more interesting considering I know what's coming up. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm learning new things too. I'm so, this is. Humans are so interesting. This oh. messaging me constantly for the last year, like literally sliding up on every single story I post trying to fly me out. When he tried to fly me out to dinner that time, they were actively in a relationship. Oh my God. So I'm sick because first of all, I feel like I somehow had like a part in it and I felt disgusting about that. And just the fact that like I could never have imagined that he was like capable of doing something like that because of how like romantic he was and like what a love bomber he was. I was like, I, I, what on earth do you mean? 
but he's a master manipulator. So he's, you know, he's telling me like, I was so removed from that relationship long before we broke up and I should have just called it off and I would never do something like that again. And oh. they were long distance. Like she lived in New York and he lived in Vegas. So it was like, they really didn't spend a lot of time. To well, well, hold on. Oh, so where does he, does he live in LA now or does he live in Australia? Cause he's Australian allegedly. And wait, so where does he live? Does he live? Oh, this, by the way, Brooke, I don't know if you guys remember, Brooke is the same girl that dated Matt Reif. Brooke has not, to be fair, she's in her 20s, but she's not picked the greatest people, which neither did I in my 20s, but she dated Matt Reif. And Matt Reif is the guy who made like a derogatory, basically comedy skit about her. And he's like very derogatory because she, it's a whole thing. I won't get into it. But that's, so Brooke has now two very narcissistic or egocentric people. But I think I think Matt is probably more egoistic or like in his ego. And um, it sounds like, what's his name? Citizen Kane is much more pathological because it gets worse. Together and like somehow the way that he described it to me made it seem like less bad. It was horrible. I get but it. But I didn't let it go. And that was at the top of my mind. Okay. And again, we're staying together. So the next morning, I'm in bed with him when he is on a call with his manager. Mm. All right. And he is begging his manager, telling him, whatever it takes, I need you to have that interview deleted. <gasps> and he's talking about the Zach Sang interview that I referenced. Oh, earlier. girl. Okay. And I am like, what's going on? I hadn't seen the interview yet, but Zach's one of our best friends. Like, I was like, like what could possibly be in this interview that is so bad that he wants it off the internet. But you know, like Clinton's telling his manager, like, I don't care, like just get it down. So in bed next to him, I get on my little phone and I go to the interview and I start to read the comments. Uh oh. And in the comments, I see someone write, this is really strange. I don't know where this Australian accent came from. He is not Australian. He is from Brunei. I grew up with him. I went to school with him. And I saw his mom last week. <laughs> Part nine. I'm having so much fun. Okay. So. Oh, girl. The comments, girl. The comments. Part 10. We have reason to believe that he is A, not from Australia, faking <laughs> an Australian accent, and B, he faked the death of his family. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Oof, girl. Mm, I wish I had a joint, girl. I wish I had a joint. Oof. Oh, how do people? How do people? How do people? Mm. Okay. And like I said, I was still mad about the ex thing. So I staged this whole fight and I get the fuck out of there, which was not easy. Okay, so we've got a cheating, chronic cheater, liar, removes her from her friends and family, allegedly fake, uh, oh, a fake, oh, faked ID, and then allegedly... Possibly lying about his family dying. Oh, and being Australian. Sounds like an upstanding citizen. Easy to do, okay? I don't get to leave, remember? Oh. I go home and I get on my computer so fucking fast and I look up his mother, okay? Which oh. I've never done before. Oh. She has a very specific name. Yo, what did I... Okay, can I say something? I'll say it again. I know this sounds crazy. But I think I dated so many like losers in my 20s that I realized, okay, I need to figure out why these people allegedly hate their parents, don't have a relationship with them, or like like ex like like intense stories people tell about their lives. Like if you have too many crazy things happen to you in your life, you're either picking chaos or you're lying about it. Something is a red flag. And so, girl, the way this boy had a story after story after story, it'd be like three family members in a year. How did it happen? What are the details? Is there a new story about it? But I get it. I get it. All right. And I looked her up on Facebook. She has two accounts. Okay. Oh. And on neither of them has she posted since the date that she was supposed to have died. So in my head, I'm like, okay. It's possible she's dead, mm -hmm. but it's also possible that she is not, which like you guys, but here's the thing. Okay. <laughs> he had told me so many stories about his childhood and mm. his life growing up and told me all about his mom and what she looked like. She was Norwegian and blonde. 
okay? He would tell me about what his house looked like and how they had nannies and maids and he was so wealthy. And I'm so sorry, Fishy just said all of this for a guy she originally thought was mid. <laughs> Yo. And his mom would leave for months at a time because she also had <sighs> like she had all these like crazy businesses in addition to her being a pastor. Like I don't even know how in my right mind I like did not see right through this, but mm -hmm. he would tell me all these elaborate stories. And now I'm looking at her Facebook profile and his life was nothing of the sort oh. okay i i can see the house that he grew up in uh in brunei by the way not at all in australia keep in Girl. mind i live with this man and he has a fucking australian accent <gasps> his mom is obviously asian as is he which oh. like why would you lie about that it's such a strange thing to lie about and just i could just everything okay but you know what's even crazier than a guy faking an accent from the day like the day you started is you marrying somebody who started faking an accent basically after you were together or recently in their life. Alec Baldwin's wife literally pretended to be Spanish for like 10 years. She's not Spanish. She had Spanish nannies growing up or she like grew up in Spain or something. And she literally would be, she got featured on a magazine cover for like Latinas or something. And people were like, um, you're not this thing. What are you doing? And Alec just married this woman and stayed with her, which I, I understand, like, but at the same time, that's what, I don't, what is happening? Like, what is happening? Staying with your partners, like, faking accents, like, the way I would be horrified, the way that I would be shooketh to my core, if I was, could you, what if my husband's not even Croatian? Just kidding. <laughs> I've met his family, okay? But you know what I'm saying? Like, what like, that would be so disturbing. I would feel like I was living with a serial killer, even if he wasn't one. I'd be like, I'm living with a psycho. I'm living with a literal psycho who fakes a whole orientation, identity, accent, family history. It would feel psycho. It was fake. So while I can't immediately tell that she is alive, I can tell that he is a extreme pathological liar. Part 10, we have reason okay. to believe. Part 11, you guys, I now know that my boyfriend, who I've been with for several months, who I spend every single waking second with, has literally completely fabricated every single oh. detail about himself. I know nothing, nothing about him. And as like lighthearted and like funny as I can make the story now, like I cannot explain to you like what I felt in that moment. Mm -hmm. It was genuinely the worst feeling I've ever felt in my entire life because it was Ugh. like like I I've never been obviously lied to in that way but like I spend so much time with this person he's my best friend I'm in love with oh. him I am dating him like we are he's the closest person in the world to me and I, he made himself up and just like my nature it's impossible for me to get rid of somebody so I I knew like obviously what I know I have to break up with him and I didn't want to so I was like ooh like, what the fuck do I do? I know that sounds so dumb coming out of my mouth. That now. sounds crazy, girl. Like, mental health is real. But look at the way we make excuses for people. I am amazed. Like, look, I understand on a spectrum everybody kind of lies or tells a white lie. But I mean it when I say, like, I do not lie by, about people. And do you know why I don't lie about people? Because it is too easy for us to, one, lie about ourselves or, two, lie about other people and then all of a sudden we're making up accents. Okay, like do not lie about people, but especially don't lie to yourself, but don't lie about people. I do not lie about people. People are so willing to spread rumors and lie about people. And this is what I'm saying is so interesting about this whole situation, because wait until you hear what his reaction has been to all of this coming out, because it's even more obvious that everything is true. But even more than that, he didn't just impact, you know, 2 million fans or something or his family that's alive or Brooke, but all of his friends and his own reputation. Why would he do it? What about his own reputation? Like this is the internet, my boy. It's going to come out. So what do you think makes a person get on the internet, get 2 million followers famous on TikTok, and then think this is a good idea?
Now, of course, he could have had such a traumatizing past with his family that he recreated his identity so he doesn't have to associate himself with his family anymore. Maybe he was so mentally sick. Maybe he was in such a toxic bubble growing up that he decided to make up this whole story so he doesn't have to relive it. But can I be honest with you? That's crazy. No matter how much you've been victimized, recreating your life, including your, you know, origin of birth and all of these other things, it's, it's too much. And the chronic cheating on top of that, he's probably the problem. I bet his mother's the nicest little woman in the world. Now, but it was like, I knew that if I had the conversation, I had to break up with him. So I was like, I wasn't even sure that I wanted to have the, I almost wanted to just like pretend I didn't know. Again, I was unmedicated, but I did text him and I said, listen to me. I'm going to give you the opportunity right now to tell me if Ooh. there's anything that you've lied to me about at all. And he racked his brain for all of five minutes before he told I'm so sorry. Before we hear what he said to Brooke, Hannah said, I wonder what a conversation between Legion and Cl Clinton Kane would look like. Same kind of energy. That's what I mean. When I meet people... This, this reminds me like the chronic lying, like the people who tell they're the victim, they're the victim, they're the victim. Listen, the difference from, from a progressive talking about trauma and a natural person utilizing victim mentality or victim reputation to take advantage of you is very, very like wide. It's a very, very big difference. Okay. There is a huge difference and knowing the difference is a skill. It takes a lot of skill and I'm not even sure that I have the skill fully. I actually would doubt that I do. It's very hard to tell. It's easy to tell when someone's just traumatized and they're having like a moment. It's very hard to tell with like a very chronic liar. You have to one, be ready for it. And two, you have to be willing to sniff it out. Like every time I've met one of these chronic liar people, I have usually sniffed it out pretty quickly, usually even on the first meeting but I usually doubt myself because I think, no, what are the chances I've run into one of those people? They're not exactly very common, like a truly, like almost like pathological kind of liar, like creating horrible like lies about other people and then themselves, like he he's making up a story about his mother being a very horrible human. Maybe she is, maybe she's not, right? But it's, it's very specific where I have to ask myself, okay, is this one of those pathological liars? Like they're dangerous? Or is this one of those people who are just like traumatized and like they just need therapy and it'll be fine? Because I don't know how much therapy a person like Citizen Kane could end up like needing in order to recover. Like, I, I don't know what that looks like. Like Brooke is talking about herself, you know, I'm unmedicated, I'm making mistakes, but obviously Brooke doesn't seem to be, and even Tana at her worst is not this. This is different. You know, this is a very different kind of lie. This is a very specific way of lying. And every time I see it in someone, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. This is a very, this is what's so dangerous about them. There's no reason. There's no rhyme. It's not reasonable. When you white lie, you usually do it for a reason. Or when you even lie to your boss about being hungover and you're like, I just uh, couldn't sleep last night. You know, you're doing it so you don't get fired. There's like a reason. What is his reason for faking Australian and faking his relationship with his mom and faking everything? Like, what is the reason? Told me I had lied about my age. I am 22 years old. All that and the only thing he wanted to admit to was that he lied about his age. Wow. Part 11, you guys. Which is crazy, by the way, to lie about your age. That's just, that's the only thing he owned up to. Cool. See how he, he's like, hmm, I should own up to one of the lies so I look innocent. Which lie should I own up to? Okay, part 12. Get to the point. I confront him, obviously. I show up there the next day and I'm like, listen to me. This is what I know you need to explain yourself right fucking now. And when I tell you this man is so good at his job, you guys, because here's the thing, I'm here accusing a man of faking his mother's death, okay, with no hard evidence. I have evidence that he lied about like the conditions in which he grew up, but I'm not sure that she's alive. Mm. So I can't like with full confidence like come at him in that way. So I'm kind of hoping that he just like, confesses and he doesn't he made me feel so fucking horrible for ever possibly accusing him of lying about something like that because who would ever lie about something like that and i felt so disgusting and so guilty and i like 
I literally could not. I thought I was going crazy. Mm. And here's the thing. See? I Because you feel bad. You're like, oh my God, how could I accuse somebody of doing this? Like you do. You feel so bad even having that thought that somebody could be so crazy. But there is that you got to go with that intuition. Like, hey, something's going on. Like, what is it? That's that's what that's why the gaslighting is so easy because like it's hard to it's hard to think so weirdly of people. I don't want to even say badly, but it's it's very strange to think like, hey, has the person I've been living with like who are you? Who is this person that I'm physically putting my body next to and trusting and sleeping next to? And that's what's kind of I think scary is you realize like, oh my god, what did I how did I put myself in the situation? And I think that's I think that's why it's a little like it's a little bit like a horror film. It's unnerving, you know. I grew up very poor and obviously I had like drug addict parents and stuff and like he knows that and I've told him a lot about that. So it was like weird to me that he would lie about like pretend to have grown up super rich, but I also know that like some people are like ashamed of the way that they grew mm-hmm. up and stuff. So it's like, how am I really, I don't know why I'm making excuses for him right now. Like, why the fuck are you lying about how you grew up? Literally why? For who? But I admit my fault. I stayed with him. Okay. <laughs> I stayed with him and I know I was wrong. I don't Girl. know what I was thinking. Girl. Isn't that amazing? How we stay with people. You know, I knew my exes like would lie, but I knew one of my exes in particular had a really big problem with lying. And I just kept thinking, if I could just get him therapy, if I could just get him help. You know, when you're with somebody who's really toxic, you see them in a vulnerable moment and they're like their real self comes out and you're like, oh my God, I wish I could have this person more often because this person is so sweet and so nice. And this person's so great. I learned the hard way that that's not the real them. That the real them is the person that they are most of the time. And that sucks. Because in those moments where you feel like someone's being so vulnerable with you, someone's crying in your arms. You know how many times I've had like grown men cry in my arms and you just feel so moved by them being vulnerable. And then you realize they're using it to manipulate you. And you're like, oh, oh, oh my God. Like, damn, men out here crying in women's arms to manipulate them. I've had it happen to me a few times. Real tears. Real tears. Damn. Looking back on it now, I'm like, are you literally kidding? But I stayed with the man. But I still had my doubts, okay? Now, all of a sudden, I'm watching him differently. Every single thing that he says, I just assume is a lie. And we're fighting constantly. Oh, my God. Brooke, I've been here, Brooke. I've been here. Mm, I've been here everything i remember one night he literally started hysterically sobbing because i said as a joke that kid rock kid rock was hot okay part 12 get to the point wow i love that the manipulation how could you think of someone more than me all of these things like i know this like really really toxic guy and oh he's so toxic let me tell you same mo by the way like very similar mo and he just convinces his girl Like, nobody cares about me the way you care about me. You don't, you understand me more than anyone understands me. And like, every time, you know, people remind her that like, hey, your, your guy's kind of like a mess. She's just like, you don't get him like I get him. You know, it's this idea. It's like, we don't want to think badly of people. We want to think of people as people who just need the right kind of help. And yeah, I think most people just need the right kind of help. But I do think there's a select group of people in the population that no matter what the help they get, whether it's genetic or whatever, their own choice, who knows, they just will never change. They will never be introspective enough to change. And that's not like, a, like, I don't know how I, I just categorize them simply as people who do not change, like people who will not get better. But what's amazing is how successful this guy has become. Now, will this destroy his career? No. Absolutely not. There's no way this will end his career. I'm sorry. It just won't, which is crazy, but. Front him, obviously. I show up there the next day and I'm like, listen. And there will be women who will want to date him and they will also be crazy. They will also be crazy for wanting to date him. Okay. So just FYI. Listen to me. This is what I know. You need to explain yourself right fucking now. 
And when I tell you this man is so good at his job, mm. you guys, because here's the thing. I'm here accusing a man of faking his mother's death, oh. okay, with no... Wait, is this the same? Did I not go to the next episode? I didn't, did I? Hard evidence. Yeah, I, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Next part. All right, part 13. Lucky for him, I want to go to bed soon. But <laughs> I will spare you guys the details of how I found out that I was getting cheated on, okay? But boy, was I. Y'all have seen him. Like, was I wrong to think I didn't really have to worry about that? <laughs> it's truly amazing what he was able to accomplish. But he was, in fact, cheating on me with so many people. Like, literally. It so when she... When he was in a relationship, he cheated on his girlfriend with Brooke. And Brooke didn't know she was one of the many women, right? And then while he was with Brooke, he was cheating on her. And a bunch of the girls have come out on TikTok talking about and showing that he slid into their DMs. And like I said, we spent every single second together. So if I like matched up the timelines, it would be like we were like laying in bed watching Bridgerton and he'd be like sending a dick pic to somebody else. So that was something. And that is ultimately why we did break up. But what's interesting about that is we broke up because I accused him of cheating and he couldn't believe I would ever have the nerve. He was fully cheating on me. Yeah. Like, but mm -hmm. can you believe that? Like he broke up with me. Like how embarrassing is that? I shouldn't even tell you that. But you guys know that story. I was a wreck. Not handled that well. I was not doing well. It was a really, really rough time. All right, but it was only then that I had the confidence to bring the mom thing back up again. So we're on the phone and I'm hysterically sobbing and I'm asking him, how could you do this, blah, blah, blah. Do you need to be institutionalized, <laughs> etc." Yes. And I ask him, also, why did you fake the death of your family? And of course, he denies it. And I then tell him, I've been talking to your mother. I had not been talking to his mother. Oh, but bitch. That got him. <gasps> he finally admitted that he did, in fact, fake the death of his mom. And his oh, she got him, bro. She literally, she literally, oh, she 4T, she 4D chest, the 4D chest liar. Oh, I did not see that coming. His brother, his dad is dead. Okay. Not that that's a good thing, but there's one out of three that are dead damn the rest are still kicking so um i guess it's like a positive if you think about all his songs about how he like just wishes he could talk to his mom one more time it's like well call her oh. <laughs> all right part 13 lucky for him I oh go my soon. god stop anyway it has now been two years since we've broken up and he had the nerve to post a tiktok today saying that i cannot let it go and i just want to go on record and say no fucking shit. Apparently his new song comes out on Friday and the man will do anything to get a stream. So honestly, you guys, do him a service. He needs money for therapy. And if you take nothing else away from this story, just know that treating um, underlying mental health conditions is very important because had I known what was wrong with me, I would have never gone near that man to begin with. Mm. Anyway, it has now been two years since we broke That's up. That's crazy. There's a lot of people asking. Like, so, oh. okay, the comment says maybe slowly being the key uh, keyword, years even. He clearly doesn't have an accent at all during most of that interview. Zach knew something. Well, did his accent ever, like, go in and out? Like, did you ever notice that he, like, didn't have an accent? And truthfully, he never, almost never had the accent with only me, okay? girl girl like he would turn it on when my friends were around or when we're at dinner with people or whatever and i was like okay slay but like you know he's a performance artist but i didn't really think that much of it because obviously like i'm american and i just figured like he was like mirroring me sometimes if i felt like he was really being irrational i would record our arguments because I'd like to show them to him the next day. He knew I did this, by the way. This is not illegal. Mm -hmm. um, and you can, there's just nothing Australian about him. Wow. I'll let you be the judge. It's uncomfortable. You can see it to fucking anyone else. You can go with Tana and say it. When I'm in that room, you don't. Because I'm saying it right now, I'm uncomfortable. You want to keep saying, I'm, you want to keep saying things I'm uncomfortable about? Keep going. I'm just going to be like weirded out. I'm going to be like, oh, wow. 
That's crazy. Something I brought up to my girlfriend that I said was uncomfortable. She doesn't acknowledge it, nor respect that I am uncomfortable about it. And she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to stop saying it, even though it doesn't demoralize her personality or her or her value. You literally no, don't even know what it that means. No, it doesn't demoralize your personality. What are you even talking what, 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 what are you talking about? Here we go. Turn off. That is not what demoralize means. There's a lot of people ask me like, well, did... You know, it's interesting. I almost hear a slight accent, but not Australian, if that makes sense. Jenny, Jenna, Jenna says, when you start recording arguments, it's over. Bro, it's over. Once you're recording, it's over. The toxicity is there, bro. We're doing a haul. Okay, so then she just goes into her regular content. Okay, I just want you to hear like a snippet of his music, just so you hear the sound of the way he sings, but I won't play it for very long. Hearts don't fit, even if we love so hard, we know there's no coming back. Okay, so like that's his like, like that's that, that's the song, like that's how his music is, you know what I mean? Like that's his, okay? So that's his vibe. Now, let's see if I have it here. Keep going, sorry. Sorry to interrupt you, mate. Love ya. That was the strong. Okay, this is the interview back with Zach Singh. And this is the interview in which Zach's coworker calls him out for his accent. So listen to this. Keep going, sorry. Sorry to interrupt you, mate. Love ya. That was the strongest your accent's been since you've been in here. Yeah. You sounded pretty American until you just said sorry. Really? Mate. Yeah. Oh, damn it. You gotta fix that. I have to, I have to go back to Australia and hibernate over there. Yeah, you don't wanna sound like us. I don't. No, it's, it's the last thing I want. I agree. Oh. It's atrocious. No, I actually do love American accents. Keep going. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt you, mate. Isn't that crazy? Like, they literally even called him out on the accent, which is interesting. Like, I... Why Why? Did he, why, why is this happening? Like, why would this human do this? Now, okay, hold on. Let me see. Do I have it here? This one. Okay, hold on. So, there is now girls sharing his videos with Australian boyfriends or husbands and they are rating his accent. Okay, babe. First off, where are you from? Australia, mate. <laughs> Down under. Sees the camera, Jeez. puts it on. Okay. <laughs> that was a weird question. <laughs> well, tell me where you think this person is from based on the voice. Three years? Four years? <laughs> I've had like Maybe like eight, ten. So the video keeps going for a while and he basically says like, oh, he's from America. And then this couple has turned it into like a whole series of like figuring out where his accent's from. So obviously he's allegedly not even from America, but he's got like an American accent. And then, okay, so this is a video he put out as re like a reaction to all of this, okay? So his reaction to all of this is... It's time that I finally address all of the rumors. It's time that I finally address all of the rumors. The song comes out next Friday. You and I have so then he just ends up playing his music. But what's confusing about this is this came out in May, right? Like this was May 24th. He said, it's time to address the rumors. And all the comments are about Brooke. But per Brooke's story is from a day ago. So then I was like, where did the rumors come from? Allegedly, she dropped hints like a while back about this story coming out. And then I was like, is he trying to get ahead of it? What's going on? But then like Tana had talked about it and people started talking about it prior to her coming out with this series. Apparently, all of her friends did like him. Like people liked him. And then they found out what was going on. So then the question is, is like, why does this happen? Why do people fall for people's stories okay now this is the craziest association to make with this story but i've been wanting to talk about a different story for a really long time that i think explains this to a t of why one people won't care and why some people will still romanticize him two why men have or people i says to all genders have sort of a mental health issue a pathological liar issue but why people still end up with them. So, okay, I'm going to show you guys a, a TikTok. 
It's a stitch, okay? And it's a news story that's been going around, but there's a girl who's replying to it, and it's a drama that's happening in book talk right now. And I want to talk about how these two toxic communities tend to overlap. So first, there's the Brooks of the world and the Tanas, who are what I would call high to mid-level traumatized, dating higher to like mid-level traumatized people. And they sort of make these toxic relationships, right? Like Tana had two very prominent toxic relationships that I can think of. Um, the girl, I forgot her name, and Jake Paul. And that was confusing. There was a falling out. And then on top of it, Brooke has had this relationship and the one with Matt Reif. And I'm like, okay, this is like more relatable in my mid to high toxic like relationships with people where I was like, yeah, it's like you live for their potential. You want, you know, you think you can help them by getting them into therapy. But then, then, okay, there's a second group of people. And this group of people is like, the high, 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 high toxic levels. Like so high, maybe you should be institutionalized, right? And these are the people who like fall in love with murderers in prison, okay? These are the people that like romanticize incredibly toxic men because they're good looking or because they have a thing they like or that is sexy and they make excuses for their bad behavior no matter how bad their behavior becomes. So you know how we just covered Dr. Disrespect, a man who at the when he was in his mid-30s had an inappropriate messaging back and forth with a minor, and his wife didn't leave him, allegedly. And then even prior to that, had cheated on her and she didn't leave him, which is, you know, maybe she's staying for the money. Who knows? But more than that, look what the very high, 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 high toxic bubble is going through in related to book talk. OK, this is just OK. Forewarning, like trigger warning, like girls. OK, do you know this guy's face at all? Hold on. Before I show you this, hold on. Before I show you this here, I'll give you, How do you know, wait, I'll give you a rundown. OK, so just like get ready, this, this face, okay, this face, obviously, psychopath, like, I'm looking at him, and I'm, like, dangerous, if I saw this man, I would run, I would run the fuck away, yes, he's got conventionally attractive features, and it's not his tattoos that make me run away, it's his fucking shark eyes, it's the deadness of his eyes, look at those eyes, Look at those vibes. And you know how many girls are looking at him right now and like, I can save him because he's got somewhat conventional features. The tattoos can be like explained away. Plenty of rock stars have tattoos. Post Malone has crazy tattoos. Post Malone looks crazy. He's the nicest little bean. This man right here, his dead eyes, watch this. How do you know Wade Wilson? He's my son. Stephen Testaseca is Wilson's biological father. Back on October 7th, 2019, he got call after call from his tattoo-covered son. He just told me, you know, he did something. There was two people gone that would not be back. He said, I'm a killer. I just thought it was another story. Testaseca recalls Wilson telling him how he met Christine Melton at a bar and ended up at her home. He said he got on top of her and choked her. Hours later, he said Wilson ran into Diane Ruiz, somehow got her into the car and choked her too. He said that he pulled her out of the car and realized that she was still breathing. He said he got back in the car and ran her over until she looked like spaghetti. Wilson showed no emotion as evidence continued to pile up. His biological dad ultimately turned him over to police. What's his demeanor as he's telling you? He was excited. You say excited, what do you mean by that? He just, I felt like he was wanting me to feel the way he felt about it. Mm. He seemed proud of it? Yes. Did he seem to show any kind of remorse? Oh, ma'am. And was he able to go into great detail about both of these ladies' deaths? Yes, ma'am. How do you know Wade Wilson? Okay, right? So, psychopath. Killer. Okay, so sexy music. I don't want to play it for copyright. I had to stop and make a video about this because this pertains to book talk. And I'm actually so mad that I'm shaking right now. Okay, for those of you that don't know, I couldn't actually stitch the video. But there are videos like this going around about this man. His name is Wade Wilson. He is currently on trial and he's going through sentencing right now. Hopefully getting the penalty because he unalived two women brutally completely unprovoked like i'm talking snatched one off the side of the road for funsies thought it would be cool strangled her in his car and then when he realized that she was still breathing yanked her out and ran over her until he said quote unquote she looked like spaghetti he then unalived another woman during the same day that he did this he ruthlessly beat his ex-girlfriend almost and tried to unalive her as well 
and went on this rampage of just violence, okay? You're, you're watching this video, in addition to just being already a serial unaliver and a horrible person, he is a white supremacist, mm. okay? He has the swastika tattooed on his face mm-hmm. and on the side of his head, mm-hmm. okay? He is tatted up. This man is a literal monster. And I am seeing thirst traps and videos like this, and I am seeing mutuals and people on Book Talk in the comments fetishizing mm-hmm. this man. I have screenshotted some of them. Some of you were my mutuals. I literally unfriended you so fast because you make me sick to my stomach. This is not fiction. Y'all are in there commenting things about book talk. You are literally like, oh, I are I like some of you, I already know book talks in here. Ha ha ha. Daddy, I love him. Daddy, I can fix him. Are you for real right now? Mm. Like, when have we lost, like, have we lost our rockers? Where are we, and and I'm To be fair, to be fair, and I will say this the way I said it back then, and I remember everybody was so mad at me for not liking Gypsy Rose, and I said I got totally bad vibes from this woman and the fact that everybody was mad at me for it at the time. Do y'all remember? Do y'all remember? People were so mad at my reaction to Gypsy Rose. And I said that that teacher that fell in love with her and started writing her letters in prison was also crazy. Ryan, they're all crazy. And now her and Ryan aren't even together and she's with her original ex. And now everybody hates Gypsy Rose because they're over her because like she's you. Stop writing people in prison. okay? let people do their fucking time. okay? Like focus now, to be fair, the same group of people that are willing to fall in love with serial killers are willing to romanticize this man, they are telling on themselves. So that's really what we're learning from this is like when we choose partners, it is also a reflection of us. Yes, you can be absolutely victimized and understand that we pick sometimes the people who end up victimizing us, which doesn't take away what they've done to us. This isn't about victim blaming. I'm not your conservative mother. I'm not trying to fucking be an asshole. Okay, I'm literally saying the same women that are romanticizing this killer are women that are sort of like telling on themselves. They are telling on themselves. Okay? Sorry, some of you are like, oh my books, oh my gosh, tell me this isn't what we read. What books are you reading on book talk or in the romance genre where any one of the characters would ever do something like that? One. Two, are you seriously that immoral? These are real people. These Mm -hmm. are real victims with real families. This man is on trial right now for doing this to people. And his own dad, the dad I just showed you, he turned him in. Shout out to that dad, because I know that must have been hard, but he turned his own son in. And he said he's been having problems since he was a child. He's probably a psychopath. Like he's probably genetically predisposed. Like he, this is probably hugely genetics at play. Let's be real. Right. If he's been having problems since he was a kid. Like I am so mad. This is not book talk. This is not my book talk. If I see any of you in the comments, I'm going to drag you so hard. I'm screenshotting every single one that I'm seeing because that is so gross. And this is why, this is why book talk is a bad name. And it's the same people that are probably commenting these disgusting, like smexual harassment stuff in guys' comments like, ooh, but my book and like, knock it off. Y'all. I love that. Knock it off. Knock. That's such a mom thing. Knock it off. All right. Have lost the, like you've lost your minds and it disgusts me. You are not book talk. You are not anything associated with book talk. I want nothing to do with you. And I can tell you right now, a vast majority of this community is going to be saying the same Mm. exact thing. So literally please leave, see yourself out. Absolutely not. You should seriously be disgusted with yourself. That is all. Get it together, people. Love her nails. Shout out. Love the passion. It's not about book talk or whatever bubble or who or Brooke or Tana. It's about acknowledging that there are going to be people in the population that are going to go together. The question is, do you go together with these people? And I think that's the hardest thing for us to introspect about is to look at the people that we choose and wonder. You know, I was just watching Trisha and Jeff Wittick on Trisha's podcast. Honestly, one of the best podcasts Trisha's done in a really long time. Like, sometimes she just has, like, this really great chemistry with her guests, and it's really, really good. And her and Jeff were really vibing together. I haven't finished it, but it's so good so far. And just listening to Jeff and Trisha tell stories about David and everybody, they knew. They knew it was bad. 
But they also believed there was a goodness in David. There was a goodness in that group. There was a goodness there. But they know. Even Trish is dropping hints about knowing stuff about people in the group. And I'm like, I believe it. People suck. But people suck because of a lack of morals and values. They don't know what they think is right or wrong. There are so many people right now who are even talking about Dr. Disrespect. And a lot of people who used to defend him strongly are like, fuck, I can't defend him anymore. And then some people are still doubling down and defending him. Look, you know, there's a difference between a mistake and a decision. And Citizen Kane over here, what's his name? He's making a decision, okay? Like this kid's making a decision and he made the decision to lie about his family dying, to lie about his origin, to lie about so many things, to cheat on people. This is why I say the reason serial cheating or cheating in general is bad is not because like, you know, oh yeah, I cheated in my early 20s and I'm a reformed person. Like I always say, Abba has a really great video, shout out to Abba, has a really great video about the time he was the bad guy. Abba calls himself the bad guy in his video about cheating. He's like, I was the villain, basically. He deeply regrets it. I don't have any idea in my head that Abba would cheat on a future partner. First, this was a very long time ago. It happened one time. And when he talks about it, he makes it clear that he is the villain in the story. When Dr. Disrespect, when other people talk about chronically cheating, they're the victim. It was a mistake. I was insane. You just don't understand how stressful it was. I was feeling alone in my marriage. I just, I, I couldn't, f excuse, 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 excuse. This is the difference from somebody who has morals and somebody who doesn't. Somebody who knows themselves enough to understand like they made a horrible decision. Abba didn't call it a mistake. Abba said, yeah, it was the bad guy. I did a horrible thing right? And that's the difference. So when we look at serial cheaters, the reason why it's so bad is because you did it again and again, or you're lenient towards it, or you make excuses for it. And then you wonder what else are you capable of? If you're willing to physically cheat on your partner or even emotionally, you're willing to gaslight and lie to them. What else are you willing to do? Now, look, Brooke was never physically abused by her partner, but this was abusive. To lie, manipulate, and coerce somebody into a relationship with you under such false uh, uh, pretenses is so unethical. This is not what we want for society. This is not good for society. This is bad. This is bad. I think this does relate to women fantasizing over really toxic, toxic people. And I also think it's important to recognize, like, do you know the difference between fantasy and reality? Stories are exaggerated explanations about life but they are exaggerated. They are literally exaggerated so you can relate them to your life, not so you can mimic them. And I think that that's where we've lost the plot. Like we have forgotten that even Leave it to Beaver was an exaggerated example of the nuclear family. It is an exaggeration. It's not reality. So, you know, they say life is stranger than fiction. I think for this reason, it's exaggerated. Even the good stuff is exaggerated. So I really think we need to be more aware of that. Crimsicle says, after 2020, I feel like younger people don't see the divide in real life and fiction online things as much as before. Like it was an issue, but not to this degree. I think I have to agree with that as much as I want to say it's not true. I think millennials were the last generation that really understood like there is a huge difference between fiction and reality. Yeah, I think so. I don't, I don't know how Gen Z is doing, but... You know, Crazy says it shows his character being able to objectively look at himself as the villain. Reasons like that are why I really like Abba as a human. Yeah, Abba has a really good sense of character. And I think that's why I do like him. Now, of course, I don't know him outside of the couple of times, you know, we've, you know, we've interacted on stream. I've met him in real life. He was really lovely. But from everything that I've seen about him, from everything I've learned about him, he really does seem like a very good person. He's never said anything to me that made me go like, what the fuck? Like, not like in a very, very, like maybe we disagree on like nuances or something, but like, he's not out here cheating. You know, he's not out here, you know, talking about women grossly in private quarters. Like he's not out here doing gross things. You know, he's out here being like a gentleman, um, unlike some other people in our sphere who, you know, honestly, at this point, I am so excited for people to be better people, but I swear to God, the next person that comes into my life and has a certain kind of reputation of being like a serial cheater, uh-uh, girl, don't even call me. 
Don't even call me. Don't message me. Don't collab with me. I don't want to hear from you. You can, you can stay out my DMs. Thank you. You can stay out my DMs. <laughs> Michael says, even when he slapped you, it was kind of nice. <laughs> it was very nice. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Oh, he's a team player, Abba. He's funny. He's funny. Also, you know what it is? Abba's not paranoid. He doesn't read into things. I try not to read into things. You know, I'm not a very paranoid person. That's why I don't like Jordan Peterson. And I don't like the whole debate bro sphere. They're so paranoid as people. I had to like unsubscribe from basically like everyone in the debate sphere. It's like too cynical, too paranoid. You know, there's a couple people I still watch, but generally like it's such a paranoid space. And I think because they're always debating morals and they're always trying to figure out where people are coming from. There's also like a cynicism like a really kind of negative person that gets attracted to that bubble. Same with toxic partying and toxic Hollywood and toxic like online Instagram and all that stuff. Like all of that attracts a very certain kind of person. You know, I was having this realization and it's hard to admit it out loud. It is. But when you have the combative person in the community, like the person that really causes the drama, it does bring in more activity because people want to comment on the drama. When things are peaceful and nice, there is less activity. And I think about that all the time. When you have a toxic person in the community, they really do bring in the engagement. But man, it's not good for your soul. It's not good for your spirit. It's not. And that's why it's so hard being a content creator. Jeff Wittick was talking to Trisha about this, how he had a deal from Snapchat for a little while because that's how David got his deal. He said that they have to use clickbait and a lot of sensationalism to get the views. And he, he really started to hate it. Like Corinna had to use her body, you know, because David was like, use your body, use your body for clicks. And it was like kind of gross. If Corinna did it on her own, whatever. But David being the instigator of like, let's use your boobs to get people's attention when his audience was primarily minors is very gross. And that's the thing too. These people are targeting minors and sexualizing Corinna as an adult, trying to get teenagers invested in Snapchat. That's crazy, right? And then I think about, how that makes you feel as a creative. Now, Jeff is a creative. He always has been, you know, regardless of people thinking he's just a pretty face. Huh? Going back to that video we watched the other day about pretty people being taken less seriously. But Jeff is a creative. And Jeff has shown that time and time again. And same with Trisha. Like, Trisha is a creative. At the end of the day, Trisha is a creative. She's not just a girl creating drama, though that was a big part of her personality when she was very, like, unwell. She is at her heart a creative. But because of celebrity uh, connections, because of networking, because of collabs, you want to work with these collaborations because they do bring in an audience. But Trisha and Jeff said the same thing I've always said. Do not centralize your identity in business off of somebody else, especially since if they go down, you're going to go down with them. But mostly make sure you can stand on your own. But think about, you know, again, it's that question of would you be the toxic person for a while to get famous to do the healthy thing? Because Jeff and Trisha did benefit from the toxicity of David Dobrik and all those people they interacted with. And Trisha benefited from Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson. And she was one of them. It's not like she never was one of them. She was one of them. And then she decided to be less like one of them. And she was probably the better of them all. Trisha is, I think, the better of them. I think Tana and Brooke are the better of a lot of the people in the space. But don't get it wrong. You are one of them. You were there. You were one of the main characters. You pushed the same narratives. You went with the same, like, exaggerated, you know, sensationalism about your lives. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Even recently, Tana, Jeff says that Tana kind of regrets talking about Cody Ko again because Tana went on Trisha's podcast to talk about how she wasn't actually traumatized by what Cody did to her or the fact that they had sex when she, she was 17 and he was 25, but she wants to prevent it for younger girls now. And I agree with Tana. I, I agree with her. And I do actually think she was probably impacted by another older guy wanting to have sex with her. I think the trauma isn't just from the instance it happens, like the, the one moment, but it's, an, it's, it's adding on to the layer of another older guy trying to have sex with a young girl, another guy who knows her age and is willing to have sex with her, regardless if it's legal in Canada. It doesn't matter to me. The idea is that Cody was 25 and he knew Tana was 17. And the fact that he was interested in her is the red flag, right? And so I think I, I'm I'm glad to see Tana doing better and Brooke always doing better and like Trisha doing better and Jeff doing better. But let's not get it confused. You were one of them at one point, okay? That's why I tried to tell you guys I was toxic in my 20s. And I'm telling you, you don't have to be in your 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s. 
But to say that you weren't toxic is to not acknowledge like where you were at that time. And that's why I say like, I know I was toxic in my 20s because I was willing to be in those relationships. I know I was toxic because of the way I was acting. I know I was toxic. I certainly wasn't healthy. It's about owning it so you can be better. And I I feel like people sometimes don't own it enough. They kind of put the blame on the other people. But I think a lot of them are doing the work. I've heard Trisha definitely take acknowledgement of it and definitely say, oh, I've I've been toxic, you know, and I think that's important. It's like Dr. Disrespect saying, um, he called when he cheated on his wife. I don't know if you guys saw my new edit for the post. I just posted, but I added in some more videos. Because if you watch the stream, you're seeing me live. But when I put up the clips, I add more context for viewers in case they miss the stream. And Dr. Disrespect, when he initially cheated on his wife, literally fake cried and went, oh, mistakes, man. Oh, fucking mistakes. He called it a mistake. And then he cheated on her again by DMing a minor. And what did he call it? He called it a stupid mistake. He goes, I'm not the same guy I was all those years ago. You sure about that? So this guy, this Kane guy, Clinton Kane, whatever, I don't know what story he's gonna spin to his viewers. I don't know what story he's gonna spin to the internet, but there is gonna be a person out there who hears it, who sees everything Brooke posted and still slides into this guy's DMs. And I think that's so human, I guess. I don't know. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, dun, dun.